Okay, what I got here is a little car that the customer brought and they thought the front brake caliper was stuck. So, I pulled the wheel off and I want to verify what the problem is. So I want to know if it's the caliper sticking, if it's the slides here, or if it's this brake hose going up through here. Because sometimes these brake hose will swell and the inside will delaminate a little bit and make it like a check valve. And a lot of people think it's the caliper. So when I take a wheel off, now keep in mind I've had this apart already. Um, there is no pad on the inside. I got it out because the caliper is so tight getting on and off just so I can show you this. But I usually get a screwdriver in here and I'll pull, okay, with the cap off the master cylinder. And if you can pull, it's not going to go easy, you know, it's going to be like um, real gradual. But if you can pull that, then you know the piston's okay, these slides are okay, and this brake hose should be pretty much okay for letting fluid back. Now, some people say not to do that because the fluid returns into the ABS. You know, that is a valid point. I've never had that issue, but if your brake fluid inside is really contaminated, that could cause an issue, I guess. But on this test, what I want to do here is I want to pull like this, and I could not pull this caliper at all, okay? I could not pull it at all that way. Okay, so what I've done next was I got a wrench on the bleeder, and I opened the bleeder up, okay? And then I got a screwdriver in here, and see, I can pull it, and there is a little bit of fluid comes out, but it is so hard to pull that there's still resistance. So that's telling me that this brake caliper, telling me that this brake caliper is sticking. But because it got easier, I'm in presumption that this hose is also an issue. So what we're going to do here is we're going to replace the hose along with the caliper. Now if you open this bleeder up, and you could put a screwdriver in here and pull that caliper freely then you can pretty much blame the hose but if you open the bleeder and it makes no difference whatsoever it's usually the caliper alright like this time we have a caliper and a hose both bad I believe so let me um, take this off I've already had it off Now, I always wire this up to something when you're not working on a caliper. But I also took these apart and, and um, put brake lube in them. Because this is the slides. You want to make sure they move freely. You also want to make sure your shoes move freely in these. As you can see, I have the other one out. But um, So let me go ahead and get this brake hose off of here. Now, I just get a screwdriver or something behind here. And usually these clips will come right off. Ooh. That's all you got, so a little, little tin clip. And then this line will be loose. Now, I had already broke this um, line loose before. So another thing to do is put the cap back on the master cylinder and have something to catch your fluid in because you are going to lose a little bit of fluid um, until we get the line on. Okay, now on this, you don't have to use your old banjo bolt because they don't give us one. And this caliper's going to go like this. So the line naturally goes like that, so we'll do it this way. Now what you're going to have here is two copper washers. I hope you can see them in my hand. Um, one goes on the inside, one goes on the outside. And you gotta make sure that this banjo bolts, what they call this, is really clean all those places. And those copper washers is actually where it seals. So get that started in there. If you got new washers, always use them. That's the wrong wrench. Okay, now we're going to put this caliper right on here for now, just to hold it. Now one thing to keep in mind, 
when you're putting one of these calipers on see how when I turn this it kicks that out these have a flat spot on two sides this slide does and this caliper actually has a little notch here and those have to be turned the right way to go all the way in so that was just something I want to bring in because I have seen cars where that was turned and tightened up with that being when they're pinched and crooked now you gotta get this thing turned so it goes up in your hole here and then you want to get your brake line started now I always start these brake lines by hand make sure you get them in there good by hand so you know that they're threaded now sometimes you might have to wiggle them around or work it around a little bit to get it start okay that's about going in good okay, that's almost all the way tightened up by hand so now I can get this put up in there I might have to turn this a little bit or something until it lines up but I want to make sure I get that hose all the way up in there and get the clip in next okay I have to get my glasses <coughs> there again there's two flat sides and you got to turn that up to where it goes in and then you'll put this clip back in this little tang always goes up away There's a little groove. There's a little groove in here, and that's where these two pieces will fit into. They'll slide right into that groove. So make sure they're both in the groove. And usually you can slide them in. If not, you take something and tap. Just be careful because that is a very thin clip. You can bend them. So now what I'll do is I'll tighten up this line. Okay, now what I've done is I've cracked that bleeder open and I got a hose on there just so I can control where the brake fluid goes a little better. But with that bleeder hose open, <clears throat> I'll come up here and I'm going to open the master cylinder. Now, I do have a vacuum pump that I could put on here, but I got other things I need to do right now, so I'm just going to let this sit here and gravity bleed. And, um,. You just got to keep an eye to keep the master cylinder full. You just don't want to let that run out because if you run out in the master cylinder, you, you got to bleed the whole system. So if you want to do this now, when the first fluid comes out, doesn't mean you're done either. I let it run for a while because you'll find bubbles every so often. So that's what we're going to do for now. We're going to let this gravity bleed. Okay, I don't know if you can see this. You can see the fluid coming up the hose right now. See right here. Now once that starts running, I should be able to kind of keep an eye out for bubbles right here. You can see there's a bubbles, right there is a bubble, two bubbles. So that's where a clear hose comes in nice. So you can see the bubbles actually come up through and you want to run that run until the bubbles quit and like I say do not let the master cylinder there's another bubble go by don't let the master cylinder run completely out all right now what I've done here is I've closed this bleeder off I put the cap back on the master cylinder now I don't get in the car and I don't push the brake pedal because this is pushed all the way back so I don't let this get um, tight because the first time you always hit the brake pedal after you've done brakes, you'll have to take the room up between the caliper and the brake pads. So while I'm doing that, you guys look for leaks. See any leaks, yell out and tell me. Okay, one other thing I want to mention before we put the wheel back on. We have been working here with brake fluid and stuff. So just for good measure, let's take brake clean and clean the inside and outside of that rotor and everything. Make sure we don't get no brake fluid 
into the brakes. And then we'll put the tire back on here and um, see what it feels like. Okay, so I've test drove the car. Um, the brake pedal still felt a little bit low, so what I did, I went back there and readjusted the back brakes. And that brought the pedal up. Now the last thing I do, after I drive the car and recheck the lug nuts, then I put these on. That way, I know I'm not done with that wheel until that happens. Okay, I don't know if you watched the other video a while back where I asked what rotor was off of. That rotor was off a 99 Lincoln Town car. Thanks for watching.